What up, guys? Your Mr. Downtown. I'm Ray Mel. You're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, September 8th, 2017, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O. On Twitter at The Answer Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. The accountant and Jane Got a Gun director Gavin O'Connor has signed on to write and helm Suicide Squad 2 for Warner Brothers, but it's unclear exactly when he will shoot the movie. The Hollywood Reporter said Mel Gibson and Dwami Collette Sierra also had been in the running for the job before the studio decided on, on O'Connor. David Ayer directed the 2016 supervillain ensemble picture Suicide Squad, which starred Will Smith, Jared Leto, and Margot Robbie, and is now working on Gotham City Sirens, with Robbie reprising her role as Harley Quinn. The writer said Suicide Squad 2 likely won't start filming until at least the fall of 2018 due to the star's busy schedules. Will Smith shared on Facebook the first photo of him with his castmates for the upcoming movie musical Aladdin. He captioned the group selfie, We just started shooting Aladdin, and I want to introduce you guys to our new family. Mina Masood, Aladdin, Naomi Scott, Princess Jasmine, Marwan Kanzari, Jaffer, and I'm over here getting my genie on. Here we go. Smith holds the camera and smiles as his co-stars gleefully point at the lens. Guy Ritchie is directing the live-action remake of the 1992 animated classic. Netflix has ordered a One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest prequel series from American Horror Story co-creator Ryan Murphy that is set to star Sarah Paulson. The drama titled Ratchet has landed two seasons, 18 episodes order at the streaming service following a bidding war between Netflix, Hulu, and Apple Note of the Hollywood Reporter. Ratchet, which took place, which takes place in 1947, follows One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest villain Nurse Ratchet and her journey into becoming a murderer. Deadline reported. American Horror Story franchise Star Sarah Paulson is set to start as the title character that was first portrayed by Louise Fletcher in the original 1975 Academy Award winning film. Murphy is working with Fox 21 Television Studios on the project and will direct the pilot with the script by newcomer Evan Romansky. Actor Michael Douglas, who is producing the who produced the original, is serving as an executive producer. Production on Ratchet is set to begin in the middle of 2018. Game of Thrones alum Jonathan Price is signed to portray Pope Francis in the Netflix film The Pope alongside Anthony Hopkins as Pope Benedict. The City of God Helmer, France, uh, Fernando Marcellus, is set to direct with the script by Anthony McCartan, who is adapting his stage play of the same name, Deadline Reported. The Pope will follow the election and then resignation of Pope Benedict, played by Hopkins, and the election of Pope Francis, played by Price, formerly known as Argentinian Cardinal Jorge Mario Bagilio, who became the first GZA to enter the papacy and the first non-European pope since the 8th century noted the Hollywood Report. Production will begin in November in Argentina. Price is, it was easily seen as a religious figure, the High Sparrow on HBO's Game of Thrones and will next star in Terry Gilliam's The Man Who Killed Don Quixote as Don Quixote. Hopkins last appeared in season 1 of HBO's Westworld and will reprise his role as Odin in Marvel's Thor Ragnarok. Julia Lily Dreyfus has confirmed via Twitter her White House sitcom Veep will end with its seventh season. The Emmy winning actress tweeted Wednesday, It's true, but don't despair because we still have a whole season seven to write and film. Her co star Sam Richardson said in his own Twitter post, We, are, we tried to do a good job with the last season. Lily Dreyfus told The Hollywood Reporter about why the show will end in 2018. It became clear that this season should be the last. Uh, we don't want to repeat ourselves or wear out our welcome. The story has has a finality to it that feels end of series. Filmmaker Charles Burnett, cinematographer Owen Rosman, actor Donald Sutherland, and director Agnes Varda are to receive honorary Oscars in Los Angeles on November 11th. The Board of Governors of the Academy of Motion Pictures, Arts, and Science voted Tuesday night to present the four artists with Oscar statuettes at the annual 9th Annual Governors Awards at the Ray Dolby Ballroom at Hollywood and Highland Center. Academy President John Bailey said in a statement Wednesday, this year's Governors Awards reflects the breadth of internet national, independent, and mainstream filmmaking, and our tributes to four great artists whose work embodies the diversity of our shared humanity. 
Lady Gaga has given fans an inside look at her life and career in the first trailer for the upcoming Netflix documentary, Five Feet Two. The clip, released Wednesday, features cameras following the pop star as she greets fans, works on an album, enjoys a smoke break, and deals with medical issues. Gaga says in the trailer, I'm going to fight like hell for them to, to just like this. Uh, the synopsis reads, from Walmart shopping trips to doctor's visits to rocking the Super Bowl halftime show, it's Lady Gaga as you've never seen her in this revealing documentary. It continues, Gaga, five feet two, follows the superstar in her most vulnerable moments as she she pushes through chronic pain, heartbreak, and produces a soul-blooming album. Five Feet Two is set to arrive on Netflix on September 22nd. Tina Fey announced via a YouTube video that a stage musical based on her movie Mean Girls is heading to Broadway in March. Uh, a message accompanied Wednesday's clip said, Mean Girls is a ferociously funny new musical from director Casey Nicola, composer Jeff Richman, lyricist Neil Benjamin, and a book writer Tina Fey. The story of a naive newbie who falls prey to a trio of lionized fremnies. This incisive comedy gets to the hilarious heart of what it means to be a true friend and a worthy nemesis. Previews are to begin March 12th. No casting has been announced yet. The 2004 film star Fay, Lindsay Lohan, Richard McAdams, Lacey Chabert, and Amanda Siegfried. Uh, Faye wrote the script, and Mark Walters directed. Burns National Theater says its production of Angels in America is moving to Broadway in February. Director Marion Elliott's staging of Neil Kushner's play will transfer to the Neil Simon Theater after a sold-out run in London. The cast will once again include Andrew Garfield as Prior Walter, Denise Goff as Harper Pitt, Nathan Lane as Roy Cohn, and James McArdle as Louis Ironson. The uh, the website uh, the show's website noted America in the mid 1980s in the midst of the AIDS crisis and a conservative Reagan administration New Yorkers grappled with life and death love and sex and heaven and hell the play was first performed on Broadway in 1983. Goodfellas and Shades of Blues star Ray Liotta has signed on to play Colonel Harlan Sanders in a Kentucky Fried Chicken campaign. The news release announced the commercials like a house divided on game day. The latest Colonel can't decide on which authentic southern flavor to root for. Sweet and tangy Georgia gold honey mustard barbecue chicken or spicy and smoked Nashville hot chicken. The other's first spot can be now seen on Twitter. It is expected to begin airing on television Sunday. Liotta follows Rob Lowe and Daryl Hammond as recent portrayers of the the iconic KFC pitchman. Felicity Huffman reflected on her past with husband William H. Macy while celebrating 20 years of marriage with the actor this week. The 54-year-old actress dedicated throwback photos as a, and a sweet pose to Macy on their 20th anniversary Wednesday. She captioned a series of photo booths shots on Instagram. You took me home in 1985. You married me in 1997. You give me a thrill every time you walk through the door. Thank you for marrying me 20 years ago today at William H. Macy. Macy returned to love by penning a message to Huffman on Twitter. He the 67-year-old actor wrote, 20 years ago today, I did the best thing I've ever done in my life. I married Felicity Huffman. Huffman and Macy dated on and off for over a decade before tying the knot in 1997. Macy shared the secret to their successful marriage and teased their anniversary celebration in an interview with Entertainment Tonight in August. The star said, Felicity and I talk about it all. We read each other's scripts and we love to talk about acting. She insists that we walk. She keeps us talking, which I'm not completely against. Uh, he also have their plans. We've always Always fantasize about pushing all the furniture back, getting a full dance band, and inviting all our pals over and having a dance, an old-fashioned swing dance kind of thing. Khloe Kardashian wishes her family had never filmed Kim Kardashian's robbery and Caitlyn Jenner, uh, Jenner's gender transition. The 33-year-old reality star said as much while reflecting on keeping on with the Kardashians in an essay for Glamour ahead of the show's 10th anniversary. Khloe confessed, things like Kim's robbery or Caitlyn's transition, that's the kind of thing we wish we had never filmed. We aren't even like, oh, let's do this for season 9. Uh, she also added, this is our life and these are the things that happen and it's funny. When we decide not to shoot things, people feel slighted but when you film too much they're like oh you've never had filmed that, that it's a catch-22 season 10 features caitlin chloe's former stepdad coming out as a transgender to her family while season 14 showed the aftermath of kim chloe's sister being robbed at gunpoint in paris in october and the lingering tension between the family and caitlin 
Uh, Caitlin said it in her all tell all tell all memoir in an interview with Good Morning Britain this week. Since the book came out, I never talked to Chris again. Kim, I haven't talked to in six nine months. Whatever it is, uh, he the star qualified. I love Kim. She's a great person. I have such respect for her as a mother, as a business person. But like Chris, she's very opinionated. Chloe says in her essay that she considers it a gift to be vulnerable and open people in keeping with the Kardashians. The E-Series will air a 10th anniversary special September 24th. Ours is a new black star, Laverne Cox, has been named the new face of Beyonce's athletic fashion line, Ivy Park. The actress wrote on Instagram Wednesday alongside a photo of herself modeling an Ivy Park bodysuit during a film shoot and photo shoot. I feel all tingly getting to finally share this beautiful new campaign with you all. She continued, it's all about being free, listening, and moving without any judgment or limitations. Cox also shared photos of herself modeling a stylized hoodie from the line in a video ad featuring other models. Uh, she said to People Magazine about the opportunity it is like I'm dreaming. To be honest, it doesn't feel real. Uh, she's continuing, I feel like some weird fantasy that I've had since Destiny's Child. It feels amazing that I get to be part of this brand that has already inspired me and be working with a woman who has especially been a huge inspiration to me and so many folks around the world. Beyonce, in a statement provided, the brand said that the new ad campaign celebrates everyone's uniqueness. Uh, the statement reads, true beauty and power are born out of strength of character and defined from the beauty out. There's no one standard of beauty. Alanis Morissette is opening up about her debilitating experience with postpartum depression. The 43-year-old singer said in an interview with People Polish Wednesday that she has been struggling with the condition since welcoming daughter Onyx Solace with husband Mara Treadway, a.k.a. Soul Eye, in June 2016. She told the magazine, there are days I'm debilitated to the point where I can barely move. As a kid, I imagined having children and being with an amazing partner. That is a whole other wretch I didn't anticipate. Morissette ex first experienced postpartum depression after giving birth to her son, Ever Amir, in December 2010, but wasn't diagnosed until 16 months later. She said the condition returned seconds after welcoming Onyx. The star says it's very isolating. I'm used to being the rock of Gibraltar, providing and protecting and maneuvering. It had me questioning everything. I know myself to be a really incredible decision maker and a leader that people can rely on. Now I can barely decide what to eat for dinner. She added it's four times worse now. My main priority is that I want to make sure both of my children are loved and bonded with and provided for. Morissette says songwriting has been an outlet as she goes with postpartum depression. She also told fans in an Instagram post this week that she has been reading books about finding happiness and understanding the body. The singer captioned a photo of her books right now. Hashtag suffering is optional. Hashtag the subtle body. Hashtag prayers of honoring. Hashtag practicing peace in times of war. Mama to Sierra returned to the red carpet in New York this week. The 31-year-old singer attended the Tom Ford Show Wednesday at the New York Fashion Week after welcoming daughter Sienna with husband Russell Wilson in April. Sierra stood in a sleeveless Tom Ford dress with a high neck and a slit in the back. She showed off her look in an Instagram video prior to the event. Uh, the star captioned the clip of herself uh, shashang down the runway of her hotel hallway, getting ready for at the Tom Ford show. Silly girl, hashtag MYFW. Fellow stars Shaka Khan, reality star Kim Kardashian, models Cindy Crawford, and Carly Kloss were among the other celebrities at the show. Khan shared a photo with Sierra from inside the event. The 67 year old singer wrote, wearing at uh, at Tom Ford jacket and hanging out with at Sierra at the at Tom Ford runway show hashtag NYFW hashtag fierce fashionista Sierra last walked the red carpet at the Elton John AIDS Fund, uh, Foundation Academy Awards viewing party in February while she was still pregnant she gave birth to her daughter on April 28th and shared a family video while celebrating her first wedding anniversary with Wilson in July. The star wrote at the time, happy one-year anniversary at Dang Russ Wilson, one year down, hashtag forever together. Sierra is also mom to three-year-old son, Future Zaire, with ex-husband, the rapper Future. She last released the album Jackie in May 2015 and announced plans for her son's studio album the next year. Sony Music released Fantasy, a single by the late George Michael featuring Nile Rodgers on Thursday. The news release explained, first recorded by the superstar in the late 80s, the track was intended to be featured on George Michael's second solo album, the multi-platinum Listen Without Prejudice Volume 1, but was left off. Um, the... Uh, 
basically, uh, it was a subsequently a B-side from the U.S. release of the single Freedom 90 and on the U.K. version of that single Wayne for that day in 1990. But as one of his favorite tracks, George always intended for Fantasy to be a single in its own right. The recording artist chose Fantasy in early 2016 as the single to launch the reissue of his 1990 album, Listen Without Prejudice Volume 1, MTV Unplugged, which is due out... October 20th. Michael contacted Rogers to update the track for the project, and the result is the current up-tempo version of the song. Michael died at the age of 53 on December 25th, 2016. Jennifer Lopez proudly sent her twins off to fourth grade this week. The 48-year-old singer and actress shared a photo of 9-year-old daughter Emmy and son Max on their first day back to school Thursday. She captioned the picture on Instagram, so proud of my babies. Hashtag not babies anymore. Hashtag fourth grade. Hashtag love. The snapshot shows Emmy and Max smiling as they pose in their school uniforms. Both kids wore white shirts and a blazer featuring the, their school's crest with Emmy in a pleated skirt and Max in khaki slacks. Lopez shares her twins with ex-husband Mark Anthony, whom she split in 2011 after seven years of marriage. She has since started dating Alex Rodriguez and spent the weekend celebrating Warren Buffett's birthday with the former New York Yankees player. Um, the singer captioned a photo Friday with Rodriguez and Buffett out here in Omaha having a laugh with this amazing guy. Hashtag Warren Buffett. Hashtag wisdom. Hashtag fundamentals. Hashtag keep it simple. Hashtag do what you love with people you love. Rodriguez himself shares two daughters, 12-year-old Natasha and Daniel Ella with ex-wife Cynthia Curtis. He and Lopez often combine their children for family events, including a cozy day at home in July. And finally, Taylor Swift battles actor Andy Samberg in a new ad for AT&T Direct TV. The 27-year-old singer takes on the 39-year-old Brooklyn Nine-Nine star, gobbles cookie dough, and returns to the studio in the commercial for Taylor Swift Now. The ad follows a fictional day in Swift's life, including her unbelievable choreographed fight scene with Samberg. The pair previously collaborated on the skit for a 2014 episode of Saturday Night Live. Swift captioned a behind-the-scenes video from the commercial shoot, such a taxing day when they're like eat some cookie dough, and you're like, okay, I'll make the sacrifice for my art. Uh, Taylor Swift Now is a curated video catalog available to AT&T customers via the company's DirecTV Now streaming service. Swift so signed a multi-year deal with AT&T in October for future performances and content. AT&T Entertainment Group CEO John Stanky said at the time, we're thrilled to reach a deal to bring Taylor and her unique talents to her fans and our customers in a new and exclusive way. Swift so will release her sixth studio album, Reputation, on November 10th, which includes the number one single, Look What You Made Me Do. And as your entertainment report for Friday, September 8th, 2017, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back on Monday to deliver some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-A-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at the Enter report or on Instagram at the entertainment report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of the entertainment report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeartRadio iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app. Search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. Everyone have a great weekend. Good night and God bless you all.